welcome back. Today you're going to learn about a concept called productivity. While you're listening and watching today, you should try to identify what productivity is and which biomes are more or less productive and why. Before we get into this topic, we should really try to understand a concept here of gross versus net. One of the most common ones that you might come across is if you get a paycheck at the end of the month and that paycheck was originally for $1,000 and $150 was subtracted out of that paycheck for taxes, then we look at a remaining amount of $850. So this would be what would be called the gross amount. This would be the net amount. Another possible example you could come up with is if you had a, uh, a box and it was full of some kind of item like apples or something like that. The gross amount that you might get charged if you were to ship this box, the total in here, this entire box, is the gross weight but if you could take out each of the apples and figure out the mass of those, that's the net of what you're actually looking for. So let's talk a little bit about biomass because we started talking about energy pyramids and productivity is really pretty much what those are illustrating. If we look at the beginning stage here, we need to go back just a quick moment and talk about photosynthesis because that's our Kind of our starting point of this whole process of productivity. So if we have a, uh, a plant here, um, the inputs of this plant are obviously sunlight, it's going to take in carbon dioxide, and it's going to take in water. And these are going to give us the basics of photosynthesis. And the outcomes are oxygen, and then of course our stored glucose, which is C6H12O6. That's our stored glucose in this situation. So this is what we need to illustrate for productivity. Basically productivity is the gain of energy or biomass. And it's essentially what is being produced. So we have to look back at our major source of energy, which is right here, which is the sun. So this is our source of energy to start. And we're going to see how much energy is being produced from one level to the next. So let's look back at our basic pyramid of biomass. And in this pyramid of biomass, this bottom level, let's say this is our biomass of a forest. And what we want to look at is how that's feeding up. Let's say the forest goes up here to some kind of primary consumer. And let's keep this kind of simple today. Let's just say we go to then a secondary consumer. we need to figure out the overall productivity of this system. So if we have this simple forest ecosystem or biome, we want to take a look at it and figure out what productivity is in relationship to this. Well, what we don't see in this pyramid is that there was actually uh, some extra energy here that was lost along the way. Now this extra energy that we don't often refer to in plants might be given off in respiration. So that is an energy loss. Now, if we look at this in terms of plants, this entire section here is going to be what we call gross primary productivity. And of course, the remaining part, the part that's actually going to be passed on, is our net primary productivity. Okay? And that can go on for these other levels as well. This extra energy that, uh, let's say this was a bunch of small organisms that not only breathe, 
but they run around. Um, this would be lost energy or biomass. So again, if we can look at this general part here, the entire section here is going to be the gross productivity uh, and the middle section is going to be the net productivity, what's remaining after the loss. So if we look at, and again, let's just account for this little extra bit here. If we look at this entire system, this entire part here is our gross productivity. And the remaining parts here, this, this section here that uh, are these extra pieces here that aren't accounted for the losses, those three parts there are going to be what makes up our net productivity. So if you were to calculate this, you take the total energy that went into a system and you look at what is left at the end or our net productivity. So if we apply this to a, a few specifics, first we can look at different biomes. We're going to look at their breakdown based on latitude is a major factor, how far north or south of the equator they are. And then the other two major factors that come into play are climate, which includes temperature and precipitation. Now, you could imagine if you looked at this map here, we're going to have higher temperatures in this region here, and we're going to have much lower temperatures in the north and in the south pole. So we're going to have lower temps in those two regions. Rainfall is going to be kind of different depending on where you're located, maybe in relationship to a coastal region, maybe if there's a mountain range somewhere, the rainfall that you get could be greatly dependent on those. So let's take a little bit of a look at productivity based on biome. If we look at this general breakdown, you can kind of see that this side here is a tropical rainforest and over here is a desert. And then on this chart, we have a range from the open ocean to swamps and marshes. Okay, we're gonna focus more on the terrestrial part. We'll talk a little bit about the aquatic. In terms of net productivity, this is primary productivity, so this is coming out of plants. In terms of sheer amount of plants, we can see that the tropical rainforest has the highest amount here, and there's two major factors that come into that. Part of it is the amount of precipitation that it has and the high temperatures that it has. But if you look at this, at this flow here, you can see that on the far end, the lowest producer is a desert. And deserts are often known to have higher temperatures as well. So a lot of this is the precipitation. A lot of this is the flow of how much water and temperature is available. So it's this combination of these two things that makes something more productive or less productive. In the ocean, notice this is, uh, you, you might think, well, the ocean, wouldn't that have a ton of things being produced? In fact, the ocean, uh, because it's mostly made up of water, when the sunlight shines in there, a lot of the energy that could go into that system gets reflected back out of the system. So in the ocean, a lot of the energy is reflected it doesn't get into the plants as it normally would in a terrestrial based system. So you're going to have a lot more productivity in a terrestrial based system. Visually, this is pretty obvious. If we look at a rainforest versus a desert, we can see that it has a large amount of photosynthesis starting on here. So the primary productivity in this system is going to be much higher than in a desert because it's got uh, high temperatures, which are ideal for plants, and it's got a high rainfall or precipitation. And compared to deserts, which have such low precipitation, uh, if we think back about the original part 
when we talk about our photosynthesis here, we're missing this input here. So this input of water isn't going to happen. Um, this input of water isn't going to happen, and you can see the clear results that the primary productivity here is going to be significant compared to the amount of productivity happening here. The amount of plants are very low. And of course, if you have a lower amount of plants to begin with, your biomass pyramids are going to be much lower. So the amount of energy that can be passed up can be significantly less. I hope you learned something new today.